Hey, hey, welcome back, tribe. Um, this is the NASW Code of Ethics Breakdown Part 8, so uh, stay tuned. Okay, so 1.16, referral for services. When should we refer a client, right? If we get a question like that, let's refer to 1.16, referral for services. A, social workers should refer clients to other professionals when the other professional's specialized knowledge or expertise is needed to serve clients fully or when social workers believe that they are not being effective or making reasonable progress with clients and that other services are required. So look at that, right? Let's let's really break this down. Social workers, when should we refer, right? When should social workers, when do we know to refer? Social workers should refer clients to other professionals when the other professionals that we would potentially be referring to um, specialized knowledge or expertise is needed to serve clients fully. So right there, if a client comes in and um, we don't specialize or have the, the the right type of knowledge in a certain area to serve them, it could be in substance use, uh, eating disorders, whatever it may be, we would want to refer them to those professionals that do. Or if let's say we're working with them and something develops or comes up and we're like, oh, we don't, you know, we don't have the the skill set to to manage that and to to fully serve the client, we will want to refer them, right? And this may not be completely, it could just be referring them for additional treatment for this situation on that end while still seeing us, depending on what it is. But that's one reason when we will want to refer the client. And then another reason of or when social workers believe that they are not being effective or making reasonable progress with clients and that other services are required. So when they say reasonable, it's not a definitive set number where it's like, if you don't see uh, progress in, in, in three sessions, you got to refer them out. Reasonable, right? Like using our professional judgment, reasonable progress, right? Because you know, there's a difference between, you know, uh, building rapport, you know, working on skills, you know, see how they're responding, the nature of why they're seeking uh, services, treatment in the first place, right? But there should be some reasonable progress. And if we're just at the point where it's like, I don't know if, you know, the client is really benefiting from our services and you can definitely have that discussion with them and, you know, get their thoughts on everything and how um, their benefit and not benefiting from the services, see if any adjustments can be made. Um, and sometimes, you know, referral is needed in that case, right? So if we get, you know, a question where it's referring to, you know, when to refer, you know, these, <laughs> it tells us right here, B, Social workers who refer clients to other professionals should take appropriate steps to facilitate an orderly transfer of responsibility. Social workers who refer clients to other professionals should disclose uh, with clients' consent, always get clients' consent, all pertinent information to the new service providers. So again, we want to facilitate it. We get consent from the client saying pretty much we have permission to reach out to this other professional, that agency, et cetera. And we will want to facilitate that, keep the client in a loop, let them know that, hey, here's the professional, here's the agency, whatever it may be. Um, here's uh, the release. They sign off on it, the client that is. And then we provide them with the needed information, the new professional that is, so that they know, you know what they're working with to kind of help with the uh, referral process. C, social workers are prohibited from giving or receiving payment for a referral when no professional service is provided by the referring social worker. So this is saying, let's say, for example, we're a private practice owner and we're looking at another private practice owner and we're saying, hey, uh, my caseload is filled. If you give me money, I will uh, send some people, some clients your way, right? Or saying like, hey, because I sent you this uh, client or uh, someone sent us a client, hey, give me a little fee, right? They want to prevent that um, as professionals within a profession because then it's a bias coming into play and it can cloud our judgment where let's say a client could benefit from going to another provider, but we're like, ooh, because we got that other that that incentive there was like if I send it to this provider over here, you know, we get money, we get compensated for it. And is that really, you know, in the best benefit, the best interest for the client, 
right? So we just want to avoid that. Now, if we're providing services, right? That's different. They're talking about when we're referring to other professionals or receiving from other professionals about us paying them for clients or us paying uh, us paying them or us receiving payment uh, for clients. It's just like, uh, no, let's, let's avoid that client's best interest uh, at the top. And 1.17, termination of services. <laughs> hey, Ray, when can we terminate a client? Like this is... Um, Let's refer to NASW Code of Ethics 1.17, Termination of Services. Uh, A, social workers should terminate services to clients and professional relationships with them when such services and relationships are no longer required or no longer serve the client's needs or interests. So let's say let's say we're in a situation where you know we're working with a client, they have made progress, they met their goals, but they're they're hesitant about discharging. Because they're like, oh, wait, wait, how about if something else happens? Like almost like waiting for the other shoe to drop type of thing. You know, we will want to inform them like, hey, you know, it, it's understandable, right? But just kind of empowering them and reminding them that, you know, you've reached your goals. You know how to utilize your skills, right? You got this. And we don't want to keep them in treatment, continue to provide those services when it's no longer needed. It's okay to have a general nervousness about like, man, like I got to get out there again on my own without the therapist or anything like that. But we don't want to keep them in uh, treatment, uh, receiving services when it's no longer needed, right? Because if we're waiting for them to be perfect, no one's perfect. We'll be waiting forever. B, social workers should take reasonable steps to avoid abandoning clients who are still in need of services. Social workers should withdraw services precipitously only under unusual circumstances, giving careful consideration to all factors in the situation and taking care to minimize possible adverse effects. Uh, social workers should assist in making appropriate arrangements for continuation of services when necessary. So essentially, uh, don't ghost the clients. Uh, let's not turn into Casper on them. C, social workers in fee-for-service settings may terminate services to clients who are not paying an overdue balance if if, if, if the financial contractual arrangements have been made clear to the client, pause for a second. So when a client is coming in for services, and honestly, anyone for that matter, you know, having that conversation of, hey, how much is this going to cost? If we're using our insurance, how much is the copay going to be if there is a copay, right? So usually that's kind of made clear at the start, right? So we're saying social workers in fee-for-service uh, settings may terminate services to clients who are not paying an overdue balance if the financial contractual arrangements have been made clear. So no like funny business on our end, just make it clear. Um, if the client does not pose an imminent danger to self or others, so they're not at risk to themselves or others, because if they were, that's just a risk to, again, themselves or the broader society. We don't want to do that if that's... Uh, active uh, SI and HI going on. Um, and, and if the clinical and other consequences of the current non-payment have been addressed and discussed with the client. So although when a client's coming in, you know, we go over that like in the beginning with the HIPAA and all these other forms, right, that they're signing off on and everything. If let's say they miss uh, two payments, three payments, right? You want to bring it to their attention, you want to discuss it at the next meeting, right? Where you say like, hey, um, just a heads up, like uh, we didn't receive uh, payment for the last uh, two sessions. Um, is everything okay? Because it could be a situation where let's say their insurance change, if you're taking insurance and they pay like a copay or something like that. And they're like, oh, wait, my insurance change. I didn't even know about that. It could be a card on file that was declined because you know how sometimes the cards, um, they're good for years out. And then it's like, oh, wait, I didn't know my card expired. I'll get right on it. Or they could say something like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm waiting on money that's coming in next week. Can I give it to you then? And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, they we brought it to their attention. We addressed it. Now, some of us may say, how about if it continues after that? One good conversation is all you really need, right? Because after that missed payment, right, um, and you bring it to their attention, the client that is, and you're, there should be no misunderstanding, because the client's like, okay, yeah, we'll get right on that payment. Cool, 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 cool. And then X amount of time goes by and the payment still isn't met. 
then again, that's an issue. And we don't want to just necessarily, you know, terminate them. We definitely want to, you know, provide them with resources or whatever the case may be. But you are allowed to terminate a client because think about it. Imagine if you couldn't. You literally could just see any provider uh, providing services and just say, well, I don't feel like paying. Yep. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to be here. Yep. And then I'm going to still, you know, get services for you. I'm still going to schedule sessions and everything. And it's like, uh, nah. You know, but again, you want to bring it to their attention, make sure they're not a danger to themselves or others, and uh, making sure that everything is clear, the financial obligations, and that's usually done at the beginning. But again, just really making sure that they're not a safety concern to themselves or others, and that you bring it to their attention and not just just end it uh, abruptly. D. Social workers should not terminate services to pursue a social, financial, or sexual relations with a client. <laughs> yeah, like a, a client coming in, we don't want to be like, wait a second. This is a a really good business owner, or they like a really cool person, or they fine. Like I'm about to, I can't work with you because I want to. <laughs> no, 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 nah, no, no. E, social workers who anticipate the termination or interruption of services to clients should notify clients promptly and seek the transfer, referral, or continuation of services in relation to the client's needs and preferences. So again, if we know about it. Let's act on it. Like if, again, we know we're not going to be providing services to this client for whatever the reason we're changing the job, like whatever it is, right? We just want to inform them, keep them in a loop because it helps with not abandoning them, us turning in a cast brain, like, oh, sorry, I got this other da da da. It's let, let's help the client. Again, even going back up to the very top where our number one concern, 1.01, commitment to clients. Social workers' primary responsibility is to promote the well-being of clients. That's just the first sentence in the NESW Code of Ethics. And then when we scroll back down, again, we want to make sure that, you know, we're keeping their best interests at heart. And if we know about it, we want to put them in the best position possible. And F, Social workers who are leaving an employment setting should inform clients of appropriate options for the continuation of services and of the benefits and risk of the options. So again, essentially saying that, you know, if we know about it, let's act on it. Um, if we're in like an agency organization setting, you know, keeping the clients in a loop, but they usually have protocols in place and everything. And if we're, you know, working for ourselves, let's say in a private practice, um, we want to keep them in a loop as well. List of referrals. Um the pros and cons of kind of being able to essentially like uh, continue services with another provider and again, just keeping them in the loop. Okay, Tribe, that's it for today's video. Uh, thank you for tuning in. That was the NASW Code of Ethics Breakdown Part 8. Um, and yeah, this is a series that we're going to keep going on. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Like always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and tell a social work friend. We don't want to be licensed by ourselves and we want our tribe to continue to grow and expand. All right, Tribe, I'll see you next video. Bye.